Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, uh, thank you for joining us in, in this session. I know there's a, a list of competitive sessions out there, so I was always fearful I was going to end up with an empty room, so thanks for that. Um, my name's Gary Roberts, and uh, yeah, I'm in charge of sort of sales and marketing and partnering within Forit. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about Forit at the end, actually, because what we were hoping to do in this session was we've commissioned a, uh, a survey of about 250 CMOs, CIOs, CDOs, specifically around their environment of, of, of their web estate, uh, to just learn a little bit more about what keeps them awake at night. Um, and what we were hoping to do was sort of make this a, a two-way interactive session, uh, if you're up for it, to understand how much of this resonates um, and whether this matters to you and, and, and your organizations. So, so yeah, I work for Forit. They're, they're an Edinburgh-based content management system. Our customers are global, but they're based here in, uh, here in Edinburgh. But I'll tell you a little bit more about them uh, towards the end. So, um, so yeah, so we, we did this survey of 250 web-related um, consumers, and really their output came back to us in two areas, one which was around security, uh, and the other which focused very much on content, the cost of content, and the efficiency uh, of content. So, um, so I was going to share with you now just some of the, uh, some of the outcomings of, of that, and I say, if, uh, if you've got any comments to make, any questions, please, please do shout out because uh, that will help me to make it interactive. Um, and this, by the way, is nowhere near being a complete report. So if anybody wants the report, we've, we've got to stand upstairs, come and see us, and we're very happy to, to share the, uh, the full report with you. So in terms of the uh, security challenges, these are sort of some of the stats that came out from, from the survey. Um, so 50% of the respondents are saying they have a, a, a genuine concern about the fact that their content management environment provides a cyber risk to their organizations. Um, and more and more conversations we have today come around the whole security and, and cyber control element uh, to their websites. Um, a couple of other stats I'll just quickly pull out. I mean, I'm, again, we're also happy to share some of the stats from this slide. Um, 41% are basically saying that when new content is released, sensitive data could easily get compromised in their environments, and that's something they talk about on a, on a regular basis. If we take this one step further, what we're actually seeing is, of that 50%, sorry, the 50% is general, 61% have these same concerns within banking, and 68% have the same concerns within the wealth management sector. Another security concerns uh, are around APIs or add-ons to their content management environments. Um, and you know, there's, there's two elements to the, to the add-on. One, it provides a, a vulnerability. Um, and the second element is the fact that when something goes wrong, there's always that risk that nobody's prepared to take the blame and there's a lot of finger pointing goes on within the, uh, within the fix. And again, within that, we're hearing that 88% of the respondents uh, are claiming to have more than uh, one CMS. In fact, the average number of CMSs per organization is three. And that in itself causes them security vulnerabilities. A couple more uh, security stats uh, on the element of, sorry, go back. In terms of the uh, content is the fact that as they're releasing content, so they believe that's a vulnerability, and a third of the respondents said uploading uh, data to their new environments or to their websites is creating a potential infected data breach. So the other thing I should point out is the 250 respondents typically came from the financial services and insurance sector. So this is quite specific to the fintech world. So thanks, Harold. Before we go on to the solution, can I just have a look through, across the room as to, you know, do those statistics resonate with the group? Is there anything there that you don't believe is, is fair or accurate? Everybody comfortable that that's, that's a fair representation of, of the environment? Okay. Does anybody disagree that they think that this has been over-dramatized or misrepresented in any way? 
And this, this is genuine feedback for me. It's not a, uh, not any trick questions. No? Okay. So, the, so the, some of the conclusions that came out of the survey was that, you know, what we should be doing by way of looking for solutions that don't help or don't uh, enable the organization to feel compromised in any way by security within the web environment is to be looking to build an infrastructure that is solid um, to prevent any, you know, a single case solution on a single case platform um, and constantly to be looking to assess the environment to make sure there are no security breaches within your environment. Um, and then the other piece was around cloud uh, architecture, cloud infrastructure. So the, the Forit websites are built on the Azure, and we lean very heavily on Azure. Um, and that's why we have such a strong uh, security offering is because we're built on the secure uh, Azure cloud. Okay, the other element of Forit that came out in the survey was around the actual content creation itself. Um, some of the cost challenges, some of the efficiency challenges that go on. So the content concerns was that 42% uh, of the respondents say they are in an environment where they have to comply with, with regulation. I mean, that's typically very true of financial services uh, and insurance and wealth management. 33% um, are saying they're in an environment where they need to be able to build uh, a web environment at pace quickly to appease you know, the messaging to, to their customer set. And again, roughly about a third of those are in an environment where they need to have localized offerings uh, in a global environment. The localization concerns is, is an interesting one. Uh, it's something that certainly Forit prides itself on in terms of being able to support, and I can run through a, uh, a case study in a second on that. Um, but about half of the respondents are saying look, the, that localization basically takes them uh, too long. Uh, and half of the respondents are more or less saying they don't do localization uh, because of the fact that it takes too long for the game to get messages out to different countries in different languages. 37% say they do require to have localization because that also complies with a certain amount of regulation within the, in the space they operate. And 34% talk about the fact that they drive for, for localization to provide them um, brand consistency in the countries uh, and the environments in which they operate to. <clears throat> and 25% of the respondents says that their particular CMS doesn't actually support localization in any form. Again, I mean, if, uh, if any of these don't ring true, please, uh, please shout. These are some of the uh, current CMS concerns, uh, probably very much in sort of a, a user position. One is 35%, a third of the respondents are more or less saying that their ability to be able to build and load pages is just difficult. Many talk about having to raise IT tickets before they can actually build out a page. It's not something they can actually do under their own steam. About a third again talk about integration uh, as being their issue, integration with other systems uh, and even within other SCMSs uh, within their environment. 31% um, say the content simply takes too long to update. And about 30% again talk about general CMS concerns as being the security of the, of the platform which we touched on earlier. And again, the solution that was concluded from this is that a, um, if you get the opportunity to have a single CMS integrated will reduce all your, talk, your risks of security, the lack of consistency, uh, the, the lack of ease uh, will be sorted out by having a single CMS environment. Plus, it provides better analytics and provides you that and improved uh, consistency. Similarly, streamlining the number of CMS is also a, a reduction in, in cyber risk uh, in your organizations. And of course, connected with that is having multiple CMSs and multiple vendors uh, increases your cost, your training, 
um, as well as you know, creating efficiencies around, inefficiencies around uh, consistency. And the final recommendation that came out of the survey is around the fact that the platform uh, should be able to, in this day and age, be able to support lo localization, um, not just translation, but localization uh, at pace to be able to support your global outreach. So let me come on to, uh, to who, who we are uh, and what we do. So there's, there's two sides to the, to the FORIT application. One is FORIT1, which is the content management system. And, and we are a pure content management system. We're not a DXP suite. We are pure CMS. Um, we, are, we are built on Azure, uh, and we are secure, scalable. Uh, we're easy to use. We spend a lot of time building the product for ease of use. Uh, and once the frameworks are in position and we're supporting your brand guidelines, um, then anybody who's trained and enabled can, can build a page and release it with the appropriate sign-offs, which are controlled by, by your organization. Um, as I said, we're built on, we're built on uh, Azure. Uh, we work incredibly closely with Microsoft. Uh, in fact, Microsoft is also one of our customers. We run web pages for Microsoft um, in education. Uh, and we also have the ability to be able to, once something is built, then you can have multi-use across different platforms. Uh, and indeed in terms of omni-channel. And then we have our service delivery hub, which I mean, I've been involved in CMS for about 12 years and I've worked for organizations like Sitecore and I've worked for an open source uh, CMS provider. I think this is a unique because what this provides us with is an automatic configuration of Azure. Uh, it supports being able to be ensure that the environments are, are consistent uh, and templated. Uh, it constantly ensures security is built into the core and it also makes the relatively complex billing that comes through Azure simple and, and transparent. So I think we've got a, the service delivery hub is a tool that I think is relatively unique in the marketplace that I know when we're working with customers such as Tesco Bank and Lloyd's, uh, Lloyd's Insurance, uh, they really favor the, the benefits that this provides them. Um, I also heard we were having a conversation upstairs that actually finding people with Azure skills um, you know, particularly around sort of configuration is, uh, is quite a challenge these days. So, so this tool can be set up by more or less anybody who's trained. So that, that is the Forit, the, sorry, the Forit platform, uh, content management system, uh, pure content management. We don't, we don't boast to have personalization. We don't boast to have um, a dam. We don't boast to have com commerce. We, you know, we will work with partners in that space to provide you the sort of the best of breed approach to your, to your MarTech. Um, what we've spent probably, and I say me, I mean, I've only been in the company for, for 12, 18 months, um, but the organization has done is they have spent a lot of time building the product. We've worked with two or three key customers, taking the feedback. Um, so they spent a lot of time getting the product right. Um, in doing then, they built a team. We're about 60 strong at the moment, probably of which 50 are based here in, in Edinburgh, 10 are, are down in London. Um, and now we're at the stage where we're beginning to take this product with this team and scale out to, to market. Um, we've recently signed a, a new client in the last week, um, a, a wealth management organization based in New York um, who moved off a, a WordPress environment because of their, their fear of the vulnerability that that provided them because of the, uh, the add-ons. Um, so, I mean, here's three examples of, of some of our existing customers. So we've been live with Microsoft since about 2015. So we run, they have about, they claim to have about 250 million uh, visits per year. Um, we, we deal with this through across our language translation process, allows them to have 45 languages um, whilst ensuring that they are compliant with Microsoft's very stringent um, brand guidelines. Um, and I've got a couple of case studies that we're, we'll happily share. My, Microsoft are, are very, very uh, courteous to us in terms of how often they talk about what we do and how we've made their environment better and easier. Um, then in terms of Lloyd's, so Lloyd's have been with us for about, um, I think we're heading into our third year with Lloyd's. Um, obviously heavily compliant. Uh, there's a lot of regulation. Uh, around Lloyds of London. We've got about um, three and a half pages, three and a thousand pages with them. 
um, across about uh, 10,000 documents. And it, you know, that, that was a uh, deal that we won. They were originally on Sitecore um, and WordPress, and uh, they're now sat on the, on the Forex platform. And then Tesco Bank, we've been with these guys for a couple of years now. Um, they also get around about 200 million visits a year. Uh, we went, to, you know, when you're working with people like Lloyd's and Tesco's, we, you go through the PRA, the Prudential Regulation Authority. I don't know how many of you have come across these guys. And their job seems to be to try and break the platform uh, along security. And um, they came back and shared with us that ours was one of the toughest jobs they've had in trying to breach, and we passed the P all the PRA regulations. Um, so Tesco's have been with us, um, and I think we were with, they were with HP Team Sites uh, before they came onto the, uh, the Forex platform. Um, you know, we've, we've got a stand upstairs. I'm here with, with Charlie and Liam. So even you know, if you want to talk about uh, the environments, the references, uh, the reports, uh, we're very happy to go into a, a lot more detail on, on those. Um, we've got one um, case study here. This, this was the, um, the one I was talking to you about at uh, a Microsoft Education. Um, so, you know, they, they came to us initially with horror stories about the difficulties they had in getting their translation and localization done in a timely fashion, um, whereas something would be typically released in English for English-speaking markets, uh, and then to be able to get those out, particularly into areas such as Asia, could be taking weeks, if not months, after the initial release, and the implication that was having on customer satisfaction and indeed revenues. So they came to us with that problem, um, and now what they tell us is that they're in an environment now where they can actually do this localization in days rather than weeks and months. Um, and indeed, we are able now with, in many cases, when planned, we can publish content globally, um, more or less in real time. Um, if anybody wants any more information on the, uh, on the Microsoft uh, case study, we'll, we'll very happily come and, uh, and share that. Um, and these are some of the, uh, the stats that sort of came out of, uh, of their latest. I think that actually came from an email uh, that we sort of stripped out. They were thanking us for a piece of work that we'd done with them. And they, we, we pulled some of these statistics out and then asked for permission, obviously, to be able to use it uh, as a case study in presentations. But you can see there that they, they were able to support 119 countries that came in to look uh, through their sites on the, uh, on the Forex CMS. Um, and an improvement uh, in sales engagement of 186% because of that localization and globalization uh, through the Forex site. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's more or less it. As I say, I've, I've literally skimmed the report to pull out a couple of highlights uh, for this session. Uh, there's a lot more in the report, and if you, know, if you come up to the stand, we'll take your details and we'll get those um, sent out to you. Similarly, if you want to talk about any of the content as to who we're working with today, what the CMS might mean to your specific organization, you'd be very welcome to come up to the stand and have a chat. And we also have the Lego on the stand, which uh, seems to be enticing an awful lot of people. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we'd be very welcome to come up here. But um, in the meantime, um, very happy to take any questions um, or have your thoughts on any of the stats I've shared from the uh, survey. Or are you very hungry and just want to go for lunch? I've been told I'm not allowed to leave you out early, so we've got, hey. So I think for, for, the, for the video, I think they want the mic on you. Um, one question about, do you have any experience already working with financial research? So say one of the big houses, I work for JP Morgan Chase, um, financial research is massive in volume. It's incredibly uh, regulated. Yeah. Um, so do you have any experience in that already? We, we are currently talking with uh, an organization now, which wouldn't be fair to share the name, um, but we're talking with them and beginning to, I mean, I think we've got actually got a call this coming week again uh, to pursue that. Um, and I, I believe that they're on a, a Drupal environment uh, and have concerns, so, which is why they want to come and benefit by the forex security uh, and regulation and being able to be compliant. So I guess the answer is we're about to, uh, but we don't, we haven't got a case study where we've actually delivered into that space yet. That's, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, not, not yet. Thank you. Okay. 
We use WordPress like uh, for our content management, and we uh, I totally agree for that uh, with your survey in terms of uh, like security uh, issue. Uh, for us, uh, all this API we installed is a security <laughs> issue because sometimes we install new and we ha install them heavily for every reason, like for content promotion for everything and uh, uh, can you a little bit elaborate on localization because we do localize our uh, platform for uh, five languages uh, right now and we have uh, like this problem as well and uh, how do you solve this how do we make it quicker? For example, we use a Chinese language, Chinese localization, and here when we, uh, we when, when we produce content in English, normally we need uh, Chinese uh, native speaker to just look through all this uh, new information, and it completely it sometimes it's completely new for the translation services. So how you uh, can you elaborate a little bit how you solve this quick? Localization. Yeah, sure. The, fir the first thing I would say is, you know, it's not for me to stand up here and say WordPress is a, is a, is a bad CMS. <clears throat> the, I think the issue we, we're fed back on WordPress is because there are so many requirements for add-ons, that creates a level of vulnerability for security purposes. Um, and I know some of those have been much publicized lately. And similarly, if, if one of the add-ons gets uh, a, a new release and the WordPress core hasn't had a new release, sometimes there's incompatibility or vice versa. You know, WordPress is, has a new release and the add-ons don't then integrate as they should. So that, that's, that's the comparison. Um, in, in terms of the, um, how, how the language, uh, Liam, are you okay to talk about how the, the technical side of how the languages work? You need to pick up the mic for the video. Yeah, hi, so I'm part of the pre-sales team for it. And Technically, um, it's using an Azure cognitive service off the back of for it. So that's just one way. Um, and obviously, there's multiple ways to do translation. It's quick, and you take a hit on the quality sometimes. For Chinese and Japanese speaking, you have to go through and make sure it's correct because it's, um, it's kind of an outlier. Um, so there's multiple ways. In this particular use case, we used the Azure Cognitive Service to do most of the bulk work, and then any detailed content is then manually gone over. So you get 90% of your content out the door really quickly, and then the last 10% you, you go through with a fine tooth comb to check quality. Yeah, so the Azure Cognitive Service that we use um, that has that, um, yeah, 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 it kind of, it's just a service that we use from Microsoft um, in that service. So it will, yeah, generate the translated content for you and bring that back into the Forit platform. What was that, sorry? So it's built within the, um, within the Azure. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a translation cognitive service as part of Azure that you can use. Which effectively um, for it have built on. Yeah, because um, every big platform now implements something like this. Uh, so just to, to understand. Yeah. I, I've, uh, one thing I would say is everybody can implement it. It's the execution on top of it which really sets us apart. So you can get content translated, and that's fine, but because we create the content within the platform, we push it out of the platform to get translated by a service and then bring it back in. That pushing out and bringing back in of content is the key part to executing on translation. So lots of people do the translation piece, but the actual moving of that content between the platform and the service has got to be secure, but it's also got to be efficient and fast. Um, and that's where we like to like you know, we're quite proud of it uh, and how we execute on that particular service. Yeah, because for, for Chinese language, we haven't found like uh, proper solution because at the moment it's it's not uh, good quality. I would say yeah. we tried several approaches, but nothing really works uh, except manual, just person. Yeah, and, and that's what certainly Microsoft were doing 
uh, way back before they came with us initially. Microsoft, the customer, not the platform. Uh, it does get confusing. Um, but I mean, one of, the, one of the things we didn't have time to do today was a, a demo, um, where we are able to do a demo uh, specifically on the, the, the language, uh, sorry, the, um, the localization. So, you know, if, if, if you want to catch us later, um, you know, we can, we can fix up a, uh, uh, that, that for you, for you and me, specific to your organization, of course, open to everybody. Um, I'm conscious we've got two minutes, so I don't know if anybody's got a, a last minute question. Uh, I say we're, we're at the stand all afternoon, so please come and, uh, come and join us. Um, uh, other than that, I say thank you very much for uh, joining the group. And if you want the, the report, come and see us. If you want a little bit more specific information for your organization, feel free to drop by the, uh, the stand. Thank you very much. <laughs>